these cooler nights are changing things here on Mille Lacs. Well, we're at Mille Lacs Stage 7, the last Bass Pro Tour event of the year. Never been here before, but I really like the place. Well, I've always heard stories about big smallmouth. You don't catch a lot, but you catch some big ones. There's a lot on the line at this event for me for next year's Red Crest. There's a lot going on in this tournament. We have people requalifying to fish the Bass Pro Tour, and then we have that Red Crest cut line. I'm more focused on qualifying for Red Crest. I'm about two places out right now and only a few points out, and so it's kind of tight right in there. I'm doing my best, working as hard as I can to uh, to try to move up a couple places in this tournament. I'd like to have a lot of do-overs this year, some things that didn't quite go right, and so it would make up for it right here if we could get inside that red crest cut line. It's gonna be hard to find a place to put in. That's out of the wind today, so. There's another free place right up the road and I saw a few people putting in, but I also seen them bobbing around like corks. Last event of the year, stage seven. I'm right there on the bubble. Red Crest line, and uh, it's a big week. We got a lot of work to do, and we got to get out there, wind blowing or not, we got to get out there and find some smallmouth. Let's do it. You put a rain suit on up north, even if it's not raining, it's like a part of your attire. That's one thing you got to do when you come up north is respect this weather. It's some great fishing but it's also some big water. Got an old foosball jig on. Strike cream rage crawl. We'll be dobbing him around a little bit out there today. These smallmouth love crawfish. These crawfish molt in the fall, late summer. And they get up, especially on these rocky terrain bodies of water. Smallmouth will run in there and just gorge on them up shallow. So they're probably at the final phases of that right now. I, I don't know. I don't know, I, I, I'm not gonna guess, I'm just gonna go out there and go fishing and figure it out. Let's go. I know I'm probably gonna fish up here in the tournament because it's the most protected. This is a big old bowl, man. You, you can't not fish the, the, the weather. So yeah, we're gonna put in up here on the, in a protected area go out here and just try to throw a Strike King Raid swimmer around, look for some active fish, drag a... I've taken a football jig and really finessed it up where I've kind of got a finesse version of a three quarter ounce football jig and I got some halves. This is the first time I've ever been here, so it's all new to me. I've got to figure it out on the fly. Saw that one. He liked that little baby Z2. One thing I've noticed already, man, they don't want it with a lot of action. I had to let that bait soak down there on that fish for him to eat it. Even though it's a small one, that tells me a lot. Normally, you know, I watched that fish and he just sat there and I left the Z2 right in front of his face. Not a lot of action, he didn't run off. So I just kind of soaked it, soaked it, soaked it, and soaked it a little more. And finally, just about the time I was ready to reel it in, it loaded up. So that tells you what kind of move. That tells me throughout the rest of the day and a half that I have, or two days, don't give up on them. Here we go. May not have a concentration, but it's got a big one. This is a small mouth. It's gonna be a good one for camera. Nah, it ain't no big one. Just fun. Just pulling hard, just a mean little dude. And a good action bait, like this mid-sized rage bug or the scound bug or even the baby rage crawl. 
and get on these rocky shoals, man, and it is a lot of fun. It's It needs to be a lot more fast and furious for this uh, Bass Pro Tour event. I'm gonna move on, go down the way and just start hitting more of these rocky humps, putting a waypoint where I catch them, just moving on. Trying to be efficient with my time, that's what I'm faced with, not knowing anything about this place and having a, I feel like the bandit. We got a long way to go in a short time to get there. just out here wrapping up our tackle prep. Ate a big breakfast with Andy Montgomery and did a lot of laughing so far today. So now I'm just last minute tackle prep. Just about got everything done. I rigged up three drop shot. Caught most of them first day on drop shot, which was a backup plan in that mid depth range. I was catching them out a little deeper. And I think just with these cooler nights, fall coming on, the, the fish are making a little shallower push because as I started moving shallower, I started running into more fish. So I went with, you know, from three eighths ounce drop shot weights to a quarter. I saw a lot of fish spitting up crawfish yesterday. So I am going to tie on a Strike King KVD 1.5 in a color that I am actually designing for Midway USA, which is gonna be a exclusive for them. That is really cool. And man, this is just a, a crawfish pattern that I have really caught a lot of fish on over the years. But there are a lot of fish as I was bringing them in yesterday were spitting up crawfish about that big. So, <clears throat> and they were orange, green pumpkin. And as you notice, got an olive back, little coppery type orange sides. All right, drop shots, crankbaits. Tungsten Thunder Cricket. We're ready to go battle on day two, man. It's a big tournament for me. We got off to a good start. We're right there on the bubble for Red Crest, so big day. I'm ready. So Red Crest is one of the main goals for everybody fishing this tournament trail. Ultimately win it, you know, Angler of the Year, Red Crest wins. I mean, you can't win it unless you get there. So qualifying for Red Crest is very important. I probably won't be making heavy hitters. I'll be trying. Red Crest is really the goal that's in sight. It's just right there. We gotta make it happen. If we make the knockout round, we gotta beat a few people to try to get there. Last one of the year. Big tournament for me, big day for me. I'm sitting right there on the cut line for Red Crest. I need a good event, need to make this knockout round. More importantly, I need just a good day today. Get off uh, to a good start mentally on day one. So you either really want to win real bad, you want to make the cut real bad, you want to make Red Crest, it's always something. So big day. Well, it was a, it was a good day. Started off kind of slow, very slow. I rallied, you know, I, I wasn't giving up and I had one little backup spot that I felt like had a few fish on it. It had a, you know, a, it was one little isolated spot, but it had about seven or eight fish on it in practice. I said, I'm gonna go there and try to get two or three. They were loaded in there. Hopefully we can rally again tomorrow and make the knockout round. And if I can make the knockout round and catch a few fish in it, I believe I'll make the red crest. So that's the plan, that's the goal this week. We're scratching and clawing trying to get there. My day two at this point in time, where we are right now, is the most important. Focus, catch everything that I can catch. I need about 21, 22 pounds tomorrow. If I can catch that, then a lot of pressure will be off. But I say that, man, we live with pressure all the time fishing MLF. Anytime there's a score tracker going on, there's pressure. So. I'm just gonna go out and give it all I got tomorrow. It's the king of bass, people. <laughs> Campers everywhere. 
nice and calm weather out there. Day two, sitting in a good spot. Go catch a few today and hopefully make this knockout round. That's the game plan. Again, I'm trying to figure this place out kind of as we go. There's a lot of it I haven't seen and haven't got the overall good vibe yet. I feel like I'm starting to get it dialed in and hopefully we can get out there and have a good day. We really need it because we're sitting right there, you know, like I said, on the on the bubble of Redcrest. So, you know, with Major League Fishing, that seems to be the norm, trying to get it dialed in as the turn. We only get two days. And when you take a big, giant body of water like this, this is like a, you know, a Great Lakes. It's a big body of water to get dialed in just in two days. So that's Major League Fishing style. I'm used to trying to get it figured out as we go. Man, I'm really hoping that I can catch 30 pounds today. If I can catch 30, uh, I think that'll put me in to accomplish just making that knockout round, giving myself an opportunity to make Red Crest. We don't make the knockout round, we don't go to Red Crest. Day one, mission accomplished. Day two, that's what we gotta do, stay inside that top 20. Man, I'm ready to go, been excited leading up to it. Let's go make it happen. In boat number 34, currently in eighth with 42 pounds, 12 ounces, the 2020 Patriot Cup champion, representing General Tire and Lou's Strike King. Oh, let's hear it for Mr. Mark Rose. It was a good day. You know, I didn't just light up the score tracker, but I did what I needed to do. I accomplished the goal of making the knockout round, which I had to do to make Red Crest. Now I feel like if I beat 10 or 12 guys, I've got a shot at making it. If I can beat 20 guys, I'll pretty much make it. We're not in yet. We put ourselves one step closer to making it. Feeling a lot less stress going into the knockout round because I, I didn't want to drive home back to Arkansas, not even making the knockout round, giving myself an opportunity. Now I've got a shot and I'm just going to relax and go out there and, you know, do my best and try to beat as many of them as I can and let the chips fall where they may. I'm okay right now not making Red Crest, if that makes sense. But had I not made the knockout round, I wouldn't have been okay. It's an unfortunate situation because I found an area that I really feel like I could make red crest on, but another angler found it and there's not enough fish to go around and he had to try to make the knockout round. Now he said that he's gonna let me have it tomorrow, we'll see. Yeah, we're just having to split fish up. I'm gonna go and get all these loose marks on the rods ready and tie on some new leaders and get ready for some drop shot fishing tomorrow. The way the points have shaken out, it looks like there's about three, possibly four spots available. There's about six to seven guys that potentially have a slot to, to move into those three or four slots. So yeah, about like in the beginning of the event, you gotta beat half the field to get to where you need to be. And now I gotta get, beat about half of this field to get to where I need to be. It's always something. It's a lot windier today. It's not just a little bit, it's a lot. That lake's rolling out there. We're in a protected little bay right here and you can't tell it, but I drove by it and it's, she's a rocking out there. You know, I wanna win, I wanna make the top 10, all that, but you just can't do it all the time with these guys there's too much talent it's the best in the in the business best in the world so uh, he's given me a, a good contentness but he's also blessed me a lot in my career and if I continue to do my best I want to be ready for his blessings
made it. <laughs> this was a stressful week, man. I really wanted to make Red Crest. It's the championship, it's the Super Bowl, it's what we all strive. I, I've always said I want to be at all the big money events to have an opportunity. I'm not going to make heavy hitters this year, bummed about that, but Red Crest was certainly a goal. Stressful week. I had to have about a top 20 finish to do it. We ended up 11th, and uh, whew, I can breathe a little bit now, but. That's just this sport, that's major league fishing. It's, it's just intense and there's always something that you're needing to take the next step. So we made the most of it. I mixed it up through a 1.5 today and I caught, I think seven of my fish on a 1.5 with one hook, one barb of one hook. And I landed every one of those fish. So qualifying for red crest now after being out and having bummer of a year. So good week nonetheless. I am headed home. My youngest daughter turned 17 yesterday. My wife turns 50, old lady, tomorrow. And they're at Disney World. I bought them tickets to and a big vacation to be, because I knew I was going to be away. So I let them have a girl's trip, and we're all going to get together and hug it out and give gifts and smash cakes in face and all that when we get back. Yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer. I, I like the Kings of Bass crew. We always have a good time. I used to kid them about, they, they jinx me, but now I, I welcome them. And yeah, last tournament, a little bit of a bummer that we're wrapping up Kings of Bass, but I'm sure they'll have something up their sleeve. Strike King and Lose always does. And the pro staff has uh, got a great group of guys, so they're always cooking up something. But yeah, a little bit of a bummer. There won't be any more Kings of Bass this year.